Hi, I'm here to talk to you about how to build a really simple chatbot using API.ai. One of the hardest problems in building a chatbot is not actually getting the content, but it's actually the NLP. Unless you have a PhD, which I clearly don't, you can go to API.ai and let the smart people at Google handle the NLP for you. What you'll be able to do is build a simple chatbot that orders pizza, right? Let's check it out. API AI, as I previously said, is a Google company. They were recently acquired, and it's a great way to build chatbots. You're not going to actually be programming any logic on, on API.ai. What you're actually going to do is let API handle all the NLP so that your app can handle the business logic via your backend, whether it be Node.js, Dart, Go, Java, doesn't matter. It's language agnostic. So you can go here to api.ai, great domain, and you can read up on the introduction and you can just sign in. I've already created an account, so I'm going to go to the console. And we're going to build a simple pizza app. So I'm going to go to create new agent, my pizza bot, describe your agent, the best pizza bot ever. All right, I'm going to click save and it's actually going to create the pizza bot. Let's give it a second, it's just working in the background. Okay, so let's step back and think about what we need in our app. We need a way for the user to say hi, hello, interact with us, the small talk, and then we need the user to actually order the pizza. Now, the small talk I'm not really good at, However, API.ai has a Smalltalk plugin. So usually what I always do is I go down here to Smalltalk and I just hit Enable. Just doing this is already made your bot look very smart. For example, I'm going to say hi. Look what the bot responds. Good day. How are you? Wonderful as always. Thanks for asking. Perfect. I don't need to deal with all that anymore. Now. I'm going to create an entity. An entity, if you don't know, is an, a, a person, place, or thing almost, right? It's you're creating something, an object that your app will recognize. So in the context of a pizza, it's going to be a topping. So I'm going to create an entity called topping. And I'm going to add some toppings here, right? I'm going to add onions, oops, yeah, onions, mushroom, pepperoni, pepperoni and pineapple for example I can also add synonyms for onions like those things that make me cry when I cut it that's a really weird synonym but sure that's a weird way of describing an onion now I'm gonna hit save that is my topping I'm gonna go back to intent here and I'm gonna create my first intent which is I'm hungry. Let's learn to handle I'm hungry. Hungry. And the user is going to say, I'm hungry. I want pizza. Please order pizza. Order pizza. Oh, pizza. I need food. Food me. Feed me. I don't need to come up with a lot of examples, but the more examples you add, the better it is. I'm going to go scroll down, I'm going to add a response. Hi, what type of pizza do you want? I'm going to hit save here. It's going to go ahead and it's going to create this intent. If you look at the gear icon at the top left, top left of your screen, you can see that it's spinning. When it's spinning, that means the machine is learning, right? At the bottom, it says agent training completed. Great. So now I'm going to come back here, I'm going to type in hi says good day I'm hungry if you notice I wrote I'm hungry in one of my examples here I wrote I'm hungry but I didn't write the exclamation mark I can also write hungry and it still picks it up I can also write which is food please give it to me and it recognized that it meant hungry so it said what type of pizza do you want Great. Now I can go back and I can create an order intent. 
I want a cheese pizza. Okay. I want a uh, pepperoni uh, pepperoni pizza. I spelled that wrong. Pepperoni pizza. Enter. Now, if you remember, these were toppings that we've had before. Technically, cheese is not a topping, but it really is. So, for the purpose of this, I'm going to call it a topping. So, these are all toppings. And I can keep writing more toppings. And this is required. Because otherwise, you can't have a pizza. So, I'm going to type in more. I want uh, a pineapple pizza. It's automatically detected that it's a topping. And I want a mushroom pizza. Sounds disgusting, but sure. Now I'm going to hit save here and let it train. Now, if you notice, I wrote require here. If the user doesn't write the topping that he wants, we want to ask the user what type of pizza. So I'm going to type a prompt here. You, are, you haven't told me the type of pizza you want. What type of pizza do you want? Okay. Great. And then, if everything is awesome, I'm going to write great. Your pizza is on its way. Save. Now I'm going to go back. It's training it. The monkeys are working. And we'll just wait. You can technically start working now. However, I like to wait. Just let, let it train. Okay. So now we're going to start from the start. Hi. It says, hello there, friend. I am hungry. Hi. What type of pizza do you want? Now, because we already said hi before, we could go back and edit the response and not to say hi to make it sound more natural. I want a cheese pizza. It says, great, your pizza's on its way. Now, let's go back and say hi. I am hungry. It says, what type of pizza do you want? I'm going to say, I want pizza. And it's going to actually prompt me again, what type of pizza do I want? Because we said we require a topping. So I'm going to say, I want a pineapple pizza. Great, your pizza's on its way. Now, all we've done is just built the UI for this, so to say. We've built the chat UI. If you actually want this working with an actual pizza delivery, you would have to go back into fulfillment and enable a webhook. And what that would do is, when you say, I want a cheese pizza, it would send the arguments, the variables like topping, to your backend, where then you can respond with it and say, okay, Person A wants a cheese pizza, let's make sure his account details are correct, and let's order a pizza. Then you can send a response from your backend to the API.ai. Now you might be wondering, all right, that's great. Imagine this is our entire bot, it's built. How do I actually deploy it? Like, what is this? This is just a development portal. What is my user actually going to interact with? Good question. If you go to integrations, your user can actually interact with your bot in many different ways. Facebook Messenger, Slack, Viber, Twitter, Twilio, Skype, Telegram, Line, Amazon Alexa, Microsoft Cortana, even Google Assistant. Let's use something that doesn't require a lot of authentication on our part. Sure. Great. I'm going to test it in a private Slack room here. Great. Now I'm going to go to my Slack channel. It added the bot to one of these Slack channels here. I'm going to go in and I'm going to talk to it. You can see here that it's added API AI bot. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say hi. Good day. I am hungry. You know what? I'm hungry. Hi, what type of pizza do you want? Oh, awesome. I want a cheese pizza. Great, your pizza's on its way. Within the last five minutes, not only have I built a really, really dumb pizza bot, but I've actually created a Slack bot. If I were to go back, assuming you have more than five minutes, you can go ahead and create a simple Twitter app, you can go create a Slack app, go create a Facebook Messenger app, and using API that AI, you have integrations with all sorts of different services. And the sky's the limit. 
you can actually make this very complicated, have tons of different flows. You can create lots of entities here. Imagine crust type, uh, where you want to deliver it, how fast you want to deliver it, how will you be paying. And when the user types in something that doesn't get recognized, for example, I am a red MacBook. Sorry, I didn't get that. We never programmed it to understand I am a red MacBook. So I can go back into training. I can see that a user wrote I am a red MacBook and maybe I want to handle it. Maybe I want to say I don't know what a red MacBook is, but I know what a red tomato is. Right? So I can click click to assign and actually deal with that intent if I were to create one. In short, API.ai is a very powerful tool to build chatbots very easily. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to be able to use the YouTube creator space to make my videos. However, my subscriber base is not large enough to meet their requirements. I live in a very, very small apartment in order for me to set up everything that takes a long time. And after filming, I have to take them down. So if I get about 10,000 subscribers, then I can use the YouTube space, which means I will be able to make more videos in a shorter time. And so please subscribe, it will help me so much and see you next video. Bye for now!